Uh, Jürgen, first of all, I'd imagine it's important to say that thoughts are with Sean Cox and his family at this time, and as well as hoping that he gets better, uh, I would imagine that there's also hope that fans are kept safe over in Rome next week as well. Yeah, of course. I think the the game at Houston I showed the beauty of the of the game during the game. I showed the most ugly face of parts of the game before the game. So I, when I heard first time about it, I I, 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 can, I cannot describe my, my emotions in English, to be honest. It was how it feels still. That should never have happened. To be honest, it should never have happened before or should never happen in the future. And we have to, we all have to do everything to make sure that things like that will not happen anymore. It's obviously not the solution for it. Probably nobody has that, but it's it's just uh, it's just unbelievable that something something like this can happen. And um, how you can imagine, we all are uh, with all our thoughts and and prayers with, with Sean at the moment and his family, of course. On to football matters, and obviously within the club at the moment as well, there's a lot of speculation about Steven Gerrard possibly leaving and taking over the manager's job at Rangers. From your perspective, are you worried that you might lose him from the football club again? I'm not worried, um, because if, and a big if, something like that would happen, it is always clear we, we, we will. Steven is... is was, is, and will ever be uh, a Liverpool legend. So, uh, whatever he wants to do, we support him in that. So it's easy as that. So, um, but um, there is no decision. I, I don't even know what's the situation at the moment, but uh, nobody told me uh, anything about it that there's any decision. And so, I can imagine that um, clubs are interested in signing Stevie. Massive experience as a player and now a year as a manager. So that I, I would think about him as well if I would own a club. You know, that's pretty normal. So at one day it will happen either here or somewhere else. Um, but it's his decision and he's old enough to decide things like that. And the only thing I can say we would support him in all, in all directions. What decisions are facing you in terms of midfield and attacking options with the injury to Alex Oxlade Chamberlain and Sadio Mane? We hear as well as the, a serious injury to him, or might, might it be relatively short term for him? We have not a lot of time between the games, so um, I, I prefer to wait until the last second until I have to make the decisions. But um, though that's about the boys who have a few little things um, from the game. Um, my lineup, or the idea for the lineup, is, is to win the game. Um, that's the only the only thing I, I can think about. It's not about resting players or whatever. Uh, we all know if you are a little bit prepared, to uh, quite shorted options in, in a few departments, and um, so we need to. Um, but we, it's, we have the four, it's a longer break of the of the intense week, so we have we play Tuesday and Saturday, and play then Wednesday again. So that's that's always okay from a recovery point of view. It's always good. Um, so we can we could play the same team like we played against uh, Rome if the players are available. So that's that's the only thing. But um, there will not be thousand changes because we don't have the opportunity and. It's a Premier League game, and it's very important, obviously, for both sides. So there's nothing to, to think about about resting. It's only to, to line up a, a strong side and, and try everything to win the game. If, if those players who are injured don't come through, as you said, we've seen some of your... And they can play. <laughs> obviously. Um, we've seen some of your younger players in and around the squad, on the bench, or coming on at a substitute stage. How ready do you feel that they are if they were needed from the off this weekend? In general, they are ready. That's why we have them around. But it's all about moments and, uh, and the situation. And um, it's all about we cannot bring three or four of them in the same moment. Um, they need to be in a, in a, in a really good shape. Um, 
Unfortunately, Ben, for example, was really ill. It's weeks ago, but in his age group, it takes a little bit longer to come back to fully fitness. So um, the others are even younger. So, <laughs> but we have we have still senior players to to sort it, and we cannot um, look. It's not. It's it's just not possible. Maybe one, they will be around. They will be in a squad probably, and all that stuff. If they want to play, will play. We will see, but. We cannot. This is how I learned early in my life the motherland of fair play. How could we say we rest three, four players which are able to play, obviously, because they are not injured? What would people in other clubs say? We have our own targets. We do our own goals. We do that because of us. But in, in the same way, it's about the, it's about the fair play of the competition. You cannot. It's not allowed, and um, should not be allowed. So, and that's why. I really don't think about it. It's yeah. we have our goals, and we and I think everybody meanwhile can imagine that um, Chelsea is able to win all of their last games. We play them in a week after we play them Rome and all that stuff, but nobody can go to Chelsea and say we will win there for sure. So that uh, will be an open game, of course. Um, but it is possible, and if it's possible, we need to make sure that that's still not enough. So and for that we need points. And that's it, and that's what we are looking for. And well, you need the points. Stoke are, are desperate for the points as well. For other we are desperate as well. We are desperate as well. We have exactly the same situation like Stoke. So we want to win that game. It's only about this one game. And from my point of view, and, and this is the game of the season. That's what. That's that's it. It's it's all. It's always like it is. You you create a basis. You do. You 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 go through all the difficult situations that you are in a situation where you have then the finals or the final, and this is a final. So for us, and we will. That's why I said immediately after the game, the atmosphere was outstanding. And I know it's kind of a, kind of a tradition that at 12:30 the atmosphere is not that good. Go sleep tonight at nine o'clock and come tomorrow and, and come tomorrow in the stadium and, and, and be at your best. That's what we try to do. And I would really ask every like to ask everybody for doing exactly the same, making a real special atmosphere. If it's not because of possibly if you think it's not positive third, then think about the game from Tuesday. If this if this team doesn't deserve the most outstanding atmosphere ever at twelve thirty, then I don't know. Um, Jürgen, just going or looking ahead beyond Stoke to next week, I mean, there is a concern for fans travelling and, and a concern for safety for all fans who will be attending that game, whether it be at Roma or Liverpool. And you've talked about your emotions and how you found it unbelievable to understand how something like that could happen to Sean. What's your, what's your message for those who will be attending? Uh, a few really difficult situations uh, in, in the life of a manager. That's one of them. I was never in a situation like that, to be honest. That everybody tells me it could be quite difficult there. Um, not the sports side, that's difficult for sure, that's no problem, that's what, why we go there. Um, all about the restaurant, I can't really say anything. I never experienced something like that. The only thing, and that was, it's always my, it's always how I see it. It's all about football, and only f it's only football. It's only football, and it's. I, I never understood people. They didn't understand that fact. I, ne I never, my whole life. It was not that I thought, oh, man, it's, it's nice that they have another fight next to the stadium or whatever. I really hope, and I'm pretty sure everybody who is involved in um, keeping all people there safe, um, that they do their best. And I, I, I think in, the, in a modern world, it will be possible. So I'm not too concerned about that, but I really ask for responsibility of everybody. And they really know it's a football game, not more, not less. So let's play football. If Rome will win that game and come to the final, then they deserve it. If we will go through, then we deserve it. That's it. That's the competition. And that's all. And the rest can be really, really nice, atmosphere-wise, how we had it in our stadium. Outstanding good. And we expect a fantastic atmosphere at Rome as well. They, they they had a few big games in the last few weeks there, so and they were always um, spot on. They will be spot on as, again in the stadium, but that's it. Around the stadium, nobody should think about anything else than about the game. And 
I really, I, I'm, I'm sure that all the different departments which are involved in that will do everything that everybody will be fine. So that's it. <coughs> Just following on from that, if I may, Jürgen, the Italian police apparently have been briefing uh, in the last couple of days that they believe 1,000 of the 5,000 Liverpool fans who are going to travel are known troublemakers. It seems a bit of a strange assessment, but do you think that, your fa that the police have a responsibility to, to play their part in the, sa the safety of the fans there? Uh, and do you think that your fans, what would your message to your fans be, the travelling support, in terms of their behaviour? That's common sense. What, 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 what can I say what, what they not already know? And if, if I say it, would that change it? But I can. Behave. So if there are, it's, it's easy to say. Behave like you want to treat other people, like you want to be treated by yourself if you are alone in the street, whatever. You want to feel safe. That's how it is. I have, I have no clue. You have to tell me if, if it's possible that we could have 1,000 problem supporters. I don't know how, how you call that. Um, since I'm in, I never heard anything about that. Yeah, in the past, the whole world and football world was more crazy in, 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 in this part. Eh? But um, the last few years since I'm in, I, I can't remember anything like that. But of course it's the job of the police. But the police, how I understand, will do the job. And if they think 1,000 are maybe a little bit, uh, they have to be more concerned about, yeah, and keep an eye on them. It's good. It's, uh, that's how it is. But. Um, I really, I really don't like that part of football. I, I, I don't, I can't get it. It's for me. It's, I'm not smart enough to understand. It. So how, how, why we talk about this? We have to talk about it, obviously, in the moment, 100 percent. But it should not be like this. It's, um, it's a wonderful game, and as long as we want to have the game like this, that we can have away supporters in our stadium, and then we can be away supporters in other stadiums. We have to we to show our our uh, our responsibility. We have to show that we understand. And um, I really hope that everybody is in that mood. Yes, Michael. <coughs> yeah, again, we've reached the stage of the season where a league position is not a great indicator of performance. Often, and Stoke desperate for points. What sort of challenge are you expecting from them? A real challenge. So they are in the last few games uh, uh, with Paul. Which I know uh, is a yeah, it's a Dortmund legend. So, <laughs> and um, so I know him from there. And um, they were not the most lucky um, team in the last few weeks. Eh? They lost a few games, really last minutes, <laughs> missed chances by themselves, big chances, and then they they conceded. How it sometimes happens to teams in the bottom of the table, well, how it happened to all teams. Um, so they're very intense, very intense, very direct. A lot of fight for second balls we have to face. Um, a lot of challenges on the pitch. Um, yeah, I, I was a lot of times in my life in a in a similar situation. So fighting for the league was as a player my <laughs> my life, and um, I I know about their emotions. I know how desperate they are. To, to, to win that game, but again, that's why I say I, I feel really. So it's not that I think okay they deserve to go down or whatever, but they they want to stay in it. Need to happen without the points at Liverpool, needs to because we need them as well, and we have a very difficult situation as well. On one hand side, it's kind of perverted. It's it's really fantastic doing that, and then going the next game and. Everybody's kind of expecting, or not everybody, but a lot of people are expecting resting this, resting him, bam, 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 leave him out, leave this out. And at the end, nobody can guarantee you. You can be, players can be injured in, in training, in nothing. They can get ill overnight. That's all what can happen. And there's no guarantee. So as long as we are fit, we have to use the boys. We have to play them. And um, that's what we do because we respect Stoke and because we respect the competition and, and because we have really big targets, goals, ambitions. That's what, what it is, and um, yeah, that's what we try to fulfill. With Trent Alexander-Arnold, you've, you've clearly always had a lot of faith in him, you know, the amount of responsibility you've shown uh, to give him his chance this season. How surprised have you been by his progress and how much responsibility he takes in, in matches 
at both ends of the pitch. It's all about him. Huh? It's all about him. So we had a very difficult situation at the beginning of the season. That I, I think it's, it makes sense that you don't go in a season and think, okay, the 18-year-old boy will solve all your problems on that side. So you need to create a situation where these boys can play in good moments. Um, so we had him, Joe, and Kleine, and then Kleine was not part of the squad for a long, long period. So that was his opportunity, obviously. And then it's about him to use the opportunity. And he did quite impressive so far. That's true. It's absolutely true. I'm not surprised about the fact that he can perform like this. That was the pretty obvious, pretty early, but the speed of the development is absolutely um, special and um, all credit to the boy. Sorry, Chris, have you got something noise you're going to address? Yeah, uh, yeah, just to check on Sadio, is there an issue there? Because there was some speculation yesterday. It looked like he didn't train. No, he was only a friend in hospital. Yeah, of course there's something. <laughs> 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 you can see, it's, it's not that serious, so there's a chance for tomorrow if we use that chance or not. If um, it was, It's quite early that day, yeah? So we have. Um, I said, in these times, you always have to use each minute, each second. Speak to the players, speak to the dog, speak to the physiotherapist, all that stuff. And at the end, you have to make a decision, and I will make a decision. How frustrating, Alex Oxley Chamberlain's injury as well? I have no words for that. I cannot believe that this wonderful player, person, boy, guy, whatever in such a positive situation, helping the team, having a clear, clear challenge, something like this happened. I, I really have no words for that. When I saw it back, I thought, wow. Um, it's just a shame. It's, it's, um, it's not fair, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah? But that's how life is sometimes, and then you have to, how do we say, if you get a m lemon, Make lemonade of it, and that's what we have to do. That what um, that what uh, Alex is doing of it. He's an absolute positive person, and um, yeah, he will be back. And I told him already we will wait for him like a good wife when a man is in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Just go back to what you said about, about Stephen earlier on. Um, just want to ask you about what you made of his season, his first season's coach, and the development of the players in his care, with some of which you are now benefiting from with training at Norwich. Again, sorry, I was still somewhere else. So, so yeah. You're still the wife in the prison. Yeah, no, I'm still in the prison. <laughs> yeah. um, I just wanted to ask you about your assessment of, of what Stephen has done in his first season as manager and the development of some of those players which are now coming through and are working with you at Melbourne on occasions. It's good, Stephen. The, the relationship and, and the work together with Stephen was brilliant. It was fantastic. He's, uh, I can imagine I would have loved to work together with him as a player, but then it was, it was a little bit late for that. And when we met first, from the first moment, we had quite a good first, good first chat, and then um, and from then on, it, it developed really brilliant. So he he wanted to learn. He learned. He he wanted to do the job. He did the job. Yes, He's, um, as a Liverpool coach in the youth, you have quite a good. A bunch of good players around. It's not that you have to tell them um, everything about football. So it's it's a really good start, and he used the time. So I I think if he thinks he's ready, he's ready. That's that's how it is. And um, it's he made a, had a good, very very good period in the first part of the season when all players were there. Then we started giving players on loan. What actually led to the situation that um, other players came in our squad. That's not. Um, the nicest part for a, for a youth coach, and I can imagine that he will not miss that. That you want to make a lineup, and the first team coach tells you, "Yes, it's a good idea, but I need three of them," and that's probably not the worst players in the squad. So um, that doesn't make life easier. So he had that difficult part of the season. So it was quite um, quick learning. Huh? So and he did. So I'm, if he wants, if he thinks he wants to do something different, really big if. Well, 
would be completely happy for him and we would support him and we still, as long as he's not um, the Everton manager or Man United, we still would help him if he has questions. <laughs> so it's, then that's it. That's absolutely no, no doubt about that. Um, yeah, that's all. Yeah.